Hello guys, my name is Andrei Nakulsev and we will continue today H265 basic part 2. Let's start from the very beginning from what I, uh, agenda for today. I will make small little recap from the part 1 where I talked about picture partitioning, pre prediction unit, transform unit and CU unit. Today I will touch little bit this, I will touch as a basic standard of inter-prediction modes, inter-prediction mode, motion vector, compensation, transform, callback and in loop filter. Let's start from the picture partitioning, from what we talked last time. By comparing to H264, on the top side you can see H264 partitioning. Its maximum macro block is 16 by 16, which is subdivided to smaller part, and this can be subdivided in even even smaller part than this. And it's very look like a lot of complexity going on there, and we can work out a lot about how we actually produce the pixels. But when we talking about H265, the complexity is even more than doubled because the code unit itself is could be 64 by 64 and down to the side of 4 by 4 and all different complex units like M, I, M on N, M half and N is present in, in this scenario and this is just for the code unit but we can look in the next couple of slides what is happening with prediction unit which is independently subdivided and transform unit which is actually as well sub subdivided independently from the prediction unit. Therefore for H265 is much more complex system. For the inter prediction, as far as you know the inter prediction is the first part of the encoder. On the scale of H264 by H265 by comparing to H264 is already introduced 33 angular predictions, whereas it is for Luma and for Chroma, in addition planar and DC. And as you can take this vertical and horizontal is just one of the angular prediction. And three modes derived from this, three probable modes is complex system have to derive three probable modes. I will touch it in advanced HEVC presentation. And the prediction block can be down to the 4x4 from 64x64 or it could be one big 64x64. On the scale of how it looks like from the left side is H264 and from the right side is H265. You can see the angle angles of in the prediction is much more smaller than is much more better. We can predict better, better positioning than we actually we will on calculation we will spend more time and more CPU but once we doing it is be much better presented and better quality. And as I already said Chroma is derived from Luma. Okay, this is complex picture, but it's an interesting picture. For example, this is how this is example how the inter prediction is working. For example, if you're working on the prediction block, which is eight by eight, we still need to touch left side, top side. This is bottom pixel. Right, top side, which is this from the CU of the right. And we need to take the below left predicator. I, it wasn't like this in H264. Therefore, it's introduced some padding if this pixel is you know, unavailable. And it introduced as well some smooth filtering, which is for mostly for the 32 by 32 TU blocks. And as I said already, the dependency of the chroma from Luma. And for example, ju just to touch a little bit. On the 4x4 blocks, it's no filtering at all. But if you take 32 by 32 it's applied smooth filtering. And as well, intra-PCM is available in our block. And intra-PCM is only for 2N by 2N blocks. Inter-prediction. Let's start with inter-prediction. Inter-prediction. 
fraction of the operation is 7 tap filter for the quarter pale and 8 tap filter for the half pale which is actually give us the same complexity as H264 because H264 was this is just example 6 H264 was only 6 tap filter for half pale and bilineal filter for quarter pale whereas in H265 as I said 7 tap filter for quarter pale and 8 tap filter for half pale which make us the same complexity but we can we can do it in one stage for the chroma prediction where is chroma prediction yeah for the chroma prediction we using photo filter instead of eta filter and we, we, we immediately drop the accuracy of quarter pell and we using different filter coefficients for different position on the chroma. Now motion vector and motion vector compensation which is introduce a few different modes. It's uh, merge mode first and MVP mode. Merge mode is very similar to direct and skip mode in H264 and advanced mode is very similar to motion vector and motion vector difference. Now Now for the merge mode, we we doing pruning, we doing comparison between five uh, neighborhood. We we need to take the a zero on the on the bottom side, which is not always available, and we comparing with a one, b zero, b one, b two to make the to to say which is the, the best available for the merge mode. If one of them is not available or we will not found the best one, we still taking the five most most motion vectors in the queue and then we just using O0 or the motion vector which is was the best predicted from a, one of the one of five. As I said the predicting from five spatial neighborhood and only two motion candidates chosen from from six from six from five by six it should be five sorry for the it just should, should be five Mo uh, MVP mode is actually if you're not chosen the mo merge mode we not found the, and if it's we not found the skip mode we go into MVP mode where we actually uh, signaling the difference between motion vector. Of course, if I go in back to here, if, if between merge and MVP mode is big difference because if you just signal in merge, we need to say just which number is represent the which number is best for the neighbor position. Therefore, it's very small amount of bits if we signaling the MPP mode which is complete difference of the motion vector is quite much more amount of data to send and MVP is two two candidates is actually chosen instead of five is two candidates is chosen for MVP mode now transform transform is more complex than it was introduced in h264 because it used dct and dst uh, cosine transform uh, dst transform is is for everything except of 4x4 4x4 transform blocks use only dst mode and any other is 32 by 32 16 by 60 8 8 by 8 and 4x4 use dct mode even for chroma use this T mode. As if you can imagine then if you take the matrix then it's 32 by 32 and then transform blocks and 32 by 32 and apply the transform coefficients is quite a lot of computations and it's very intense computations through this. As well we can use transform skip mode but it's only for 4x4 for TU. Now scanning, scanning it's more scanning in H265. We can use diagonal, we can, we can use vertical and horizontal. 
then it's three different scanning modes for for the transform. Kabak. Uh, Kabak is simplified in H.265 by comparing to H.265. So first we don't have KVLC at all. We can use only Kabak. But even the Kabak that is introduced in H.265 is much simpler than it was introduced in H.264. It's more context modeling but the very less number than its dependency between coded block else improved and and actually the complexity is improved therefore the callback is much faster working in H.265 in loop filter in loop filter is very similar to what we already know it can get through the blocks of TU it's applied on TU boundaries in applied on slice boundaries as well then it's two, two loop filters, one and on the slice boundaries, one and on the TU boundaries. Therefore we can do it in parallel. And in addition to the loop filter, which we already know, it's introduced sample adaptive offset, which is actually on top of in loop filter, is, uh, as you see from the right side, it looks like this. Like we can apply sample adaptive offset sour filter, but we cannot apply. It's our decision to use it. It's add on more complexity, but because we can choose the band offset and edge offset, we can actually enhance and smooth the data which was already deblocked by the in loop filter. We can just in improve the result through the sour filter. But of course this is just as a additional complexity but performance is actually outstanding it's, it's two, between two to three percent of performance improved when we applying this sour filter of course it's good as, as usage of for cpu intense cpu usage this is a picture of how we apply in sour filter uh, okay it looks like it's all for today. Thank you very much. We'll wait for you on the advanced HEVC presentation. Bye bye.